Hey everybody and welcome to Halo Wars 2. And on behalf of myself and the entire Hades Times YouTube channel, thank you Microsoft. Thank you. Now why am I thanking Microsoft? Well that's easy. Um, I basically had no content for today. Nothing. So, um, at the last minute, I found out that uh, Halo Wars 2 was doing a beta for the Blitz mode, and I decided, ooh, that sounds like something I could definitely do some content on, and lo and behold, here it is. So, that was very fortunate. Um, this is a tutorial for the Blitz mode. Basically, what you have to know about the Blitz mode is this. You have these cards that, you ha that you're going to use, in order to use the cards, in order to play the cards, you have to destroy energy containers, which are strewn about the map. Uh, and once you you can do that to get energy, and you can also defeat enemies, uh, both of which give you energy. Now, uh, to call to use these cards to call in units, it's best to call the units in on these uh, big circular silver discs. Uh, one of them being your base, uh, and then also if you take a point, uh, which we'll be getting to shortly, uh, you can also do it there, uh, with pretty much without penalty, I believe. The actual selecting of these cards is annoying, to say the least, on a console. This was definitely not a mechanic tested very well on the console. Except that somebody tried it and said, yeah, it's okay. We got to put this out on the console, so let's do it. Um, it is slow. Uh, you can easily select the wrong unit. And um, best of all, the call-ins that you have, uh, for instance, like missiles or something like that, um, also are a little bit hard to navigate during the... Um, chaos of battle so not the best way to do it but it gets the job done and that's basically halo wars all over you know it's not the best way of doing it but it gets the job done um halo wars is a is a big friend is a fun series that i uh that they're going into their sequel to right now uh the original halo wars was a lot of fun i played through the entire campaign and had a lot of fun with it um, not so much on the online, but, um, this Blitz mode definitely seems like something that you could easily play online, uh, without having the strategy, uh, layer that you would have in the normal, uh, campaign. Now, uh, for this casual, um, freedom, let's say, uh, I am talking over this campaign stuff, this, uh, tutorial stuff for the, bl for the mode because it is terrible. So I am talking over it because uh, even if just with what I've told you, you already know more than what they've shown on the thing already. It's it's pretty terrible. I was like, oh my god, when this is going to end? Anyway, um, so uh, the big thing that uh, we have a little problem with here is that the Blitz mode works like Warzone in Halo 5. So uh, if you're not familiar with Halo 5, uh, with Warzone, the only way that you can play Warzone effectively is to have cards. Uh, and these cards give you, you know, premium drops and things like that. Well, in Halo Wars 2, uh, you need these cards to actually call in units. And the more cards you have, the more some of the units level up and all kinds of things. There's a lot of little minutia associated with how these cards are going to work. The interesting thing is that in the beta right now, um, there is no way to buy cards and there is no way to see how much cards are going to cost. And judging by the way that they currently have card packs laid out, 
Uh, I believe you are getting four cards per pack. Um, but these are special packs that you're opening up for the act for the beta. So I don't know if this will be the same when you get the full game. Uh, as far as I know, the normal game, uh, the normal mode in the game, uh, which I believe in the last uh, time I played uh, Halo Wars 2 was called King of the Hill. And I believe there was a controlled zones uh, map that was somewhat similar to this Blitz thing. Um, neither one of those featured any kind of cards. So unless they've radically changed the game... Uh, this is the mode in which you will be needing to have the cards. Um, it is also seemingly the most casual mode in the game. Uh, it is definitely a drop-in, drop-out kind of thing. Um, you can play with up to three people on each side. Um, in this uh, in this playthrough, I'm only playing with uh, one other person, so we're playing two-on-two. Two. Um... So anyway, uh, the reason I'm going into this is the fact that this is going to be a $60 product. And if you want early access and you want special things and all that other stuff, it's an $80 product. And you also, you also get the Season Pass and Halo uh, Wars Definitive Edition. So it's you get a lot. But even still... Um, there's some signs that this might be a case somewhat like Gears of War, where we are paying to have cards in order to participate in a mode. Um, now, I can't discount this completely because in Halo 5, uh, in the War Zone, uh, they've actually fixed this, and, and it works fine now, and you get enough cards every day and everything else that it's not a big deal. I, I don't think that anyone at this point is complaining that you actually have to spend real money to get cards in order to compete in Warzone. I don't think. Um, I have not experienced it myself, but then again, I don't play a lot of Warzone. Uh, so, you know... Um, this was kind of annoying too, the constant, you know, trying to sell me something. But anyway, um, so, uh, it's not a big deal right now, and it certainly isn't a big deal, uh, in the confines of this beta. Uh, the beta is, uh, free, and you don't have to have, uh, pre-ordered the game or anything like that to play the beta. So uh, I would suggest to you, if you are interested at all in this, uh, to to go in and check out the beta uh, for yourself. You know, play it, play it for yourself. Now this is me opening some of the card packs. I just wanted to open them so uh, that you could see, you know, what you get and what ki different kinds of cards there are and things like that. I mean, obviously these are all going to be different depending. You know, this is all random uh, blind box. You know, okay, and there's five cards in these gold packs that I'm opening. So, uh, and you can see they're all different types of cards. Uh, some are, are Covenant, some are, um, are UNSC, you know, the whole thing. That it's, we're not, uh, you know, they're all mixed up. And there's some vehicles, there's some ground units, there's all different kinds of stuff. But as you get more cards of different types, the cards that you have level up. Um, which make them more powerful, uh, which I think could, this is not something that happens in Halo War, in, in Halo 5, and this is something much more similar to the card strategy that they have in Gears of War, so this could be an indicator that it could be a little different, that it could be more like Gears of War than it is like, um, Halo 5, which would not be a good thing. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, this was a card pack that I earned. Um, it looks like... Let's see how many cards were in there. 
okay, there were five in there as well. I earned that pack uh, by playing the tutorial. So I don't know, maybe this is just, you know, maybe you get a certain number of cards to begin with, and, and that's the way it works. I'm not sure. Now this is the standard matchmaking. We just went in, I just went into this uh, to get just a random match against a random person. Um, worked out pretty well. Uh, definitely had some hiccups. Uh, not a perfect, you know, I, it seemed like everybody was kind of new to the game. So uh, that worked out really well. Um, the choose your leader stuff is just which pack, which deck you want. Well, I only had one deck. So that's why I stuck with uh, Captain Cutter. Uh, also, I believe Captain Cutter was my previous uh, leader in the previous iteration of the uh, beta. So uh, this is Proven Grounds. I believe this is the only map available at this time, at least for this uh, this two-on-two -two, uh, matchup business. So as you can see, there are air units, there are ground units. Uh, the air unit that we have there is actually uh, is like a medic unit. Uh, it does it will heal your vehicles and ground troops as you go on. So you start out with some energy. Uh, I wanted to um, pick up some new some more guys, um, but again, um, this wheel is incredibly badly, you know. To, to pick these cards, this wheel is not a good is not a good thing. But anyway, whatever you know, what you gonna do? This guy who's a little lighter blue is my teammate, and uh, we can work together to you know um, to capture these zones. Uh, we can work together to fight enemies. We do not have control over each other's units, which makes sense, right? These are the enemies, uh, the, I believe the red and I, perhaps that yes, the red and the yellow are the, uh, are the, uh, enemy units in this case and the, the opposing team for lack of a better word. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is all, um, it's all like, you know, you just want to have a, a constant flow of units coming into the battle. Uh, it's kind of a rush mode. Um, in a regular, you know, in a more, uh, in a base building RTS, this would be considered like a rush mode. Um, and you would actually be making these units over at your base, as opposed to pulling out these cards and dropping them in. Um, I would have preferred to do it that way, but again, uh, this is a little more casually fo casual focused, uh, it appears, and it uh, lets them have a monetization uh, piece uh, with a game that probably would not really lend itself to monetization. So in order to create, um, you know, a stream of a, a monetary stream, they created, you know, this mode <laughs> and they made it card based. Um, I kind of think that that's crummy, and I don't think that it's uh, it's a decent mode. I enjoyed playing it, but I enjoyed playing it more because of the the units and you know s most of the things that were in the game because of the the nature of the game, not this card system. This card system seems very clunky, and it doesn't. Um, Again, dropping units in and stuff like that seems very clunky and not great. Um, I think that the game is going to be really good in the standard modes and everything else um, that they're going to have. Um, this will definitely be a good mode to learn how the units work and, you know, maybe some placement issues like, you know, well, if what good what are what good what are good units to defend and what are good units to attack and things like that um perhaps it, this will be a good mode for that sort of thing um but i think once you get very well acquainted with the game and you become um at least halfway decent at it you know pro at least proficient at it in some way 
uh, you will probably not want to be doing this mode anymore. You'll want to be doing the uh, the actual, you know, base on base battles, not uh, not this stuff. Um, but who knows? Uh, RTSs are very very difficult to develop for, um, and it they're very difficult to uh, you know keep going. So maybe this is uh, their way of trying to keep it going. I honestly don't see why that would why it would work that way. But hey, you know I'm not a game developer, I'm not a marketer, and I don't make six figures a year like some of the people who were involved in this game do. So uh, hey, whatever. Uh, I'm just telling you what I see. I am just letting you know uh, what I think and. Um, you know, I'm still very, very much psyched for this game. It's got quite a while yet to go before it comes out. Uh, I believe it comes out in March. Uh, so it's got a little while. Um, so it, it will be a fun game, I think. Uh, I definitely have enjoyed all my time in the beta, uh, both in this, uh, in this beta and in the previous one. So uh, I can't honestly say that I have anything... Um, negative to say about the betas uh, and so far it seems like the actual game will be very solid so uh, it'll be something to enjoy uh, hopefully and uh, hopefully there won't be a problem with um, microtransactions in the game at all um, hopefully as long as you play it'll be just a nice solid stream of uh, cards and content and everything else and uh, you'll have a lot of fun uh, you know I, I can't say I know I really <laughs> I'm really hard on microtransactions I know and um, I understand that a lot of people out there think that I'm probably pretty hypocritical because uh, the games that I really like a lot you know Overwatch Heroes of the Storm uh, now Smite uh, all have microtransaction elements in them. I mean, in fact, some of them, you know, one of the some of the major things about them are microtransactions. I mean, Overwatch has the loot boxes. Smite has, you know, all the different skins for all the different gods, and you have like uh, these chests that give you voice packs and um, pedestals and all kinds of different things. Very much similar to. Dota 2 or some of the other MOBAs that are out there. And of course, Heroes of the Storm is rife with microtransactions. You buy heroes, you buy skins for the heroes, you buy mounts, um, you know, and some of that stuff cannot be purchased with in-game gold. Some of that stuff you have to purchase with real money. Um, so I can definitely understand where people are like, you know, I seem to be have a very selective opinion on you know what I think are bad microtransactions and what I think are okay um, and you might be right but usually I fall on the side of this if the microtransactions are preventing me from playing the game in the way that I want to play it then I think the microtransactions suck um, for instance, if for some reason there were microtransactions in Overwatch that prevented me from playing a certain number of heroes unless I purchased those heroes separately, then I wouldn't be so excited about it. If in Heroes of the Storm there was no way to purchase a hero unless you bought it through microtransactions, then I wouldn't be so psyched about it. Um, these guys dropped in two of the biggest units, well, this, this big unit, they dropped in twice, and both times, me and my teammate were able to destroy it and capture the point, which I don't understand at all, especially because I was having some trouble with the cards, uh, the card, um, the card thing actually proccing. There's a, there's, with the missiles, it would not proc. I just kept hitting the button and it just wouldn't do it and I was like what the heck's the problem 
Um, I still don't know exactly what the problem was, but it wasn't working. Um, anyway, and I thought I had, had gotten out of it, but apparently I hadn't because the thing was still here and this, this card had still procced. And it was waiting for me to drop it down, but it had dropped down back into the hand and everything else. I thought it was done, and it had it wasn't done. See, now it's activating. It's like, excuse me? What the heck? Anyway, beta, folks. Anyway, um, so the games that I'm hard on microtransactions about are games that prevent you from playing the game unless you actually pay real money like uh, for instance I don't want to play the um, the computer version of smite because I'd have to buy all you know I'd have to buy whatever gods I want to play which I don't you know I don't want to do that especially because I already bought the founders pack on the, on the consoles so it's like I'm not gonna buy the gods twice right um, I'm hard on Halo 5 Guardians, I, or at least I was, because you could only play Warzone if you had these Warzone cards. Well, they kind of fixed that by making the Warzone cards much easier to, to acquire and you didn't have to spend real money anymore. Um, and I was hard on Gears of War 4 because the Horde mode was made virtually impossible at higher levels unless you had the per a particular... Uh, group or particular um, levels of cards uh, which is ridiculous so um, you know it, it, it depends on how these microtransactions are implemented as a whole I'm not a big proponent of them because I think that they're a big ripoff for the players but I do understand that the costs of development have gone up and in some cases in order to have a decent multiplayer community you have to have some form of microtransactions, and I can understand that. And in a lot of games that have lasted a very long, very long time, you know, these microtransactions have shown to work. So why wouldn't they do it? I mean, League of Legends and Dota 2 are the two top uh, multiplayer games in the world, along with Counter Strike Go. All three of these ha are rife, are completely engulfed in microtransactions and all three make more money than any video than the entirety of the rest of the video game uh, industry put t put together so I can understand where companies are chasing the microtransaction you know uh, money pot I just have a big problem with it when it doesn't seem like that they pay any attention to you know whether they're ripping off their players or not you know I, I think I feel like a lot of these things are just kind of these amounts and everything else are just kind of thrown out there and these blind boxes and everything else all this stuff's just thrown out there and they think oh well you know we'll fix it later if it doesn't work right you know anyway I hope you guys have really enjoyed this video uh, I hope that uh, your day is going really well if you did like it please give it a thumbs up and if you want more content like this, please subscribe. Thank you and have a nice day.